It is the stone that inspired legends and ignited wars and marked the grandest love stories in history. Diamond. It's not just an ornament, nor merely an investment. It is a natural miracle, forged in the depths of the earth, under unbearable pressure and unimaginable heat. It took billions of years to form, but it doesn't remain in the dark. From volcanic rocks to lovers' fingers, from modern laboratories to royal crowns, in this documentary, we take you on a unique journey through time and space. How is diamond formed? Where can it be found? How is it cut and sold? And what mysterious secrets still surround it to this day? Get ready to uncover the secrets of the most astonishing stone. In the depths of the earth, where sunlight cannot reach, and heat and pressure defy all limits, diamond is born. These sparkling stones we see in stores and jewelry were not always like this. Their journey began as a simple element, carbon. The same element that makes up coal, graphite, and even the bodies of living organisms. But under certain conditions, it transforms into the purest and hardest natural substance known to man, diamond. But how does this miraculous transformation occur? To create a diamond, very specific conditions are needed. Pressure over 50,000 times atmospheric pressure and temperatures exceeding 1,200 degrees Celsius. These conditions are only found at depths between 150 and 200 kilometers beneath the Earth's surface in a region called the Upper Mantle. There, inside rocks known as kimberlite and lamproat, diamond crystals begin to form one by one over millions of years. It all starts with a single carbon atom, then another joins and a third, forming a three-dimensional crystal lattice. This tightly bonded network is what gives diamond its unique hardness, making it the most scratch-resistant material on Earth. Strangely, diamond and graphite, though completely different in appearance and properties, are made of the same element. The only difference lies in the arrangement of atoms. In graphite, the atoms are arranged in weakly bonded layers, while in diamond, the atoms are connected in a strong, rigid structure in all directions. This structure makes diamond not only rare and beautiful, but also physically extraordinary. But diamond doesn't stay deep underground forever. Diamonds are not only created deep within the earth, they must also survive a long and perilous journey to the surface in order to be discovered by humans. But how does this rare stone travel over 150 kilometers to the earth's surface without breaking down or transforming into something else? The answer lies in a rare geological phenomenon, violent volcanic eruption. Hundreds of millions of years ago, parts of the Earth experienced massive volcanic explosions. But these were not ordinary volcanoes. They were a very special kind called kimberlite volcanoes. Through these volcanoes, magma rich in magnesium and iron surged from deep within the Earth, erupting faster than any known volcanic eruption today. Such immense speed and force were essential. Any delay could have turned the diamond into graphite due to changing pressure and temperature during the ascent. These eruptions left behind massive vertical pipes known as kimberlite pipes, which are the primary target of modern diamond mining. Inside these pipes, among ancient rock layers, we search for diamonds, traces of a long-gone explosion that carried treasures from the Earth's core to human hands. Some of the most famous regions containing these pipes include South Africa, Russia, Canada, and Australia. Every diamond we find is a survivor of a journey that almost destroyed it, from deep underground, through Earth's fire, to the surface. An incredible journey lived only by a few stones. Seeing a sparkling diamond in your hands is a magical moment, but finding that diamond in nature? That's a complex task that requires science, patience, and a lot of luck. Let's start with the simplest methods river or alluvial mining. In some regions, ancient rivers carried fragments of diamonds from volcanic rocks and scattered them along their paths. Prospectors come to riverbanks, sifting through sand and gravel, searching for a faint glimmer that might reveal a small diamond. This method is still used today in parts of Africa and South America, especially by local communities. But what about diamonds still buried in their original rocks? This takes us into the world of major mining operations. Open pit diamond mines, like the Mir Mine in Siberia or Cullinan in South Africa, are massive craters that stretch hundreds of meters deep. The process begins with geological surveys. Scientists analyze the soil, use satellites, 
and even train dogs to detect diamond-rich kimberlite and lamproite deposits. Then come the heavy machines, giant excavators and trucks. They move thousands of tons of rock to be crushed, sifted, and separated from everything non-precious. In some cases, advanced technologies like x-rays and spectral imaging are used to detect the presence of diamonds within rocks. And yet, the chances of success remain slim. Out of every one million rocks extracted, perhaps one diamond will be found that is suitable for use in jewelry. It's a game of statistics and an exhausting effort driven by a single dream to find the stone that changed history, ignited wars, and symbolized love and wealth. When diamonds are first extracted from the earth, they don't look like we imagine. They're often rough, dull, and not very shiny. The true beauty of a diamond is not born, it is crafted. This is where the transformation journey begins, from a raw stone to a mesmerizing gem. The first step is evaluation. Experts examine each stone individually to determine the ideal cut and minimize waste. Then comes the most precise and risky phase, cutting. Artisans use techniques involving lasers or rotating wheels coated in diamond dust to cut the stone at precisely calculated angles. Cutting a diamond is not just mechanical work. It is an art, requiring years of training and a skilled eye that knows how to reveal the light from within the stone. After cutting, the stone goes through polishing, where the facets are smoothed and any imperfections removed. The result? A flawless gem that reflects light from every angle and captures the eye. But how do we assess the quality of this gem? That's where the four C's come in. Cut, the shape, and precision. Color, ranging from completely colorless to faint yellow. Clarity, the degree to which the diamond is free of internal flaws. Carrot. The weight, with one carat equal to 0.2 grams. The higher the quality of these factors, the more valuable the diamond becomes. Each stone undergoes a unique journey, shaped by time and perfected by human hands. Behind the sparkle of diamonds lies a vast world of trade, politics, and controversy. The global diamond market is valued in the tens of billions of dollars annually and is controlled by a complex network of mining companies, distributors, and retailers. At the heart of this network are some of the world's top producers. Russia, where the company Alrosa runs one of the largest diamond operations on Earth. Botswana, whose economy relies heavily on its partnership with the iconic company De Beers. The Democratic Republic of Congo, South Africa, Canada, and Australia all major contributors to the market. But the darker side of this industry isn't always so brilliant. In some regions, diamonds are used to fund armed conflicts, especially in African countries torn by war. These stones are known as blood diamonds. To combat this humanitarian disaster, the Kimberley Process was launched, an international initiative to prevent illegal diamonds from entering global markets. Today, most companies demand certificates of origin to ensure the diamonds were not used to finance violence. Despite these efforts, doubts remain. Smuggling networks and powerful interests can sometimes bypass the rules. And yet, the diamond industry remains a symbol of humanity's desire for excellence and an economic dream pursued by many nations and peoples. Diamonds have always been rare, but what if we told you that humans have learned how to create them? Yes, diamonds are no longer exclusive to the depths of the earth. Today they can be grown in laboratories with the exact same properties as natural diamonds. Lab-grown diamonds are not imitations or glass. They are real diamonds made of carbon with the same hardness and crystal structure. How are they made? There are two main methods. One, high pressure. High temperature, HPHT. This method mimics the Earth's internal conditions in a pressurized chamber, turning carbon into diamond within days. Two, chemical vapor deposition, CVD. It starts with a small diamond seed placed in a chamber filled with methane gas. The gas is heated until carbon atoms begin to accumulate layer by layer, forming a diamond. These methods don't just imitate nature. In some cases, they surpass it. Lab-grown diamonds can be purer than natural ones, free of the impurities created by the earth. But can they be distinguished? Yes, but it's difficult. Only with specialized tools can experts determine whether a diamond is natural or lab-created. 
lab-made diamonds have opened new horizons, lower cost, environmentally friendly, free from conflict zones. Still, some people prefer natural diamonds. To them, no lab can manufacture time or recreate millions of years. A diamond is more than a gemstone. Behind its sparkle lies a world of astonishing facts. Did you know that, one, diamonds might rain from the sky? On planets like Saturn and Jupiter, scientists believe cosmic storms transform atmospheric carbon into diamond crystals, which fall like rain. Two, there's a diamond the size of a planet. A star discovered in a nearby galaxy is thought to be a crystallized carbon core, essentially a massive diamond weighing 10 billion trillion trillion carats. It was named Lucy after the Beatles' song Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Three, your diamond could be older than dinosaurs. Some diamonds found today formed over three billion years ago, hundreds of millions of years before dinosaurs appeared. Four, diamonds can burn. Despite their hardness, diamonds will burn if heated to high temperatures in the presence of oxygen, turning simply into carbon dioxide. Five, not all diamonds are clear. Some rare types have natural colors like blue, pink, yellow, and even black. The most expensive of all, blue diamonds, such as the famous Hope Diamond. Six, diamonds can be made from human ashes. Some companies offer to transform a loved one's ashes into a memorial diamond, literally turning memories into a lasting stone. For thousands of years, diamonds were never just stones. They symbolized power, represented eternity, and embodied love. In ancient times, the Greeks believed diamonds were the tears of the gods or shards of fallen stars. The Romans thought they held magical powers to ward off evil. Over the centuries, diamonds adorned royal crowns, noble rings, and warrior swords. But the greatest transformation came in the 20th century, when De Beers launched its famous campaign, A Diamond is Forever. Since then, the diamond engagement ring has become a global tradition, a symbol of pure love and an eternal promise. In art, in cinema, in songs, diamonds have come to represent luxury, passion, and myth. Even today, a single small diamond can stir emotions, influence decisions, and change destinies. Perhaps it's because diamonds, like people, are born under pressure, survive fire, and still manage to shine. In every diamond, a story, and in every story, a sparkle of eternity.